Okay, so this is um, the follow-up on the previous um, little sli um, slideshow of 7.1. So 7.2, we're going to look at the elemental cost analysis uh, method um, and specifically the element up to elemental um, level. So um, please take note that this method um, is a, um, a method also connected to the detailed methods where we actually work on up to the component level and not just the elemental uh, level of estimation. So um, we're going to cover this in a little bit more detail um, in our um, next section uh, of when we look at the detailed methods. But going on, uh, this um, method um, um, divides the building into certain elements. It is still average tariff um, method, you, uh, which is uh, not 100% accurate. Again, it was developed in the UK and brought to South Africa in 1958. The building units um, that make up the uh, elemental analysis um, are divided in and priced separately to increase the accuracy. So the main thing is you're just building up, uh, dividing the building into certain um, sections. Um, but um, it is a link to the um, accurate methods of measurement. So the building elements are then combined, which can be uh, used irrespective of specifications and type of the construction. Okay. The, the building cost of um, the total cost of the building is thus calculated from the sum of all the applicable element el elements um, to make up the, your cost. So um, you don't have special factors that you have to factor in. So um, you build up your rates um, by actually measuring each item and getting a, um, a elemental tariff that you can use uh, for the different sections. It is measured in the plane uh, it occurs in. So for instance, strip footings is measured uh, in meters um, and your surface beds is measured in um, square meters, for instance. So um, it just puts it in a much more logical way and uh, the way of measurement. Okay, so the advantages, it follows a logical departure point and relative, uh, it is relatively simple. Um, more accurate than the previous methods again and although more items have to be priced it does not um, take much more time than this um, story or the um, story enclosure method okay it is accurate enough to use um, in um, in early stages in the early stages of the project it can be linked with single price methods as well with the detailed methods Okay, so that's the big advantage is it can be linked uh, with your detailed methods. Information is reflected in an understandable way. And it is suitable for cost planning and cost control. Uh, can be used for both uh, sophisticated and unsophisticated users. Spatial and cost planning can be done at the same time. Historical data is needed, uh, so the disadvantage is you have to have historical data to base your calculations on, um, and obviously you need to use your discretion when um, using that um, tariff. Some elements are difficult to interpret, um, impossible in some cases, and price. Um, thus, sometimes you, what's nice about this method is you can actually um, add additional items as needed. Um, again, for instance, your um, air conditioning you can add as an additional cost. It is more intricate and time consuming than the previous methods. Okay. Possible ap applications, the disadvantages is not f fundamental and mainly limited to pricing. The, this disadvantage can be overcome by applying comprehensive methods. Um, for these items. It can be used on both sketch plans as well as detailed sketch plans. Um, it is suitable for detailed construction drawings <clears throat> because not all, all elements are catered for. And the elements can be joined or subdivided to suit. The building sections entail preparation, building external works and unforeseen expenses. Okay, so now you can see that <clears throat> Pardon me for for this method. Um, external works 
and preparations and all of these items are actually allowed for um, so it doesn't necessarily form an extra over but it forms part of the calculation okay <coughs> These sections can then be divided into subdivisions under structures, um, structure and finishes, accessories, services, and section ex of external works, and to subsections of external works and site services, etc. Okay, so here's a, a little example of um, elemental estimate, and this is one that we've done um, a while ago. So you can see what you basically have is you have your primary elements, your specialist installations, equipment, tenant installations, alterations, external works and services. You have your P's and G's here, and you can see it's a much more comprehensive uh, way of measurement. Okay, so um, obviously um, then you calculate your construction contingency on top of that. Uh, you add your VAT. Um, to that and then you get your estimate um, which is uh, much more uh, accurate and then from that you have your areas that you can calculate your areas with and you will see there's a little section that I cut off here because this is part of the component level um, that will be included uh, when you get into more uh, accurate method so just going to uh, the different elements or components so you can see each of those different elements that, are, that I've shown you in the previous slide is then um, divided into your substructures, your ground floor, uh, structural frame, external works, your roofs, internal divisions, partitions, floor finishes, etc. Okay, so you can see much more accurate and caters for much more uh, information to be included. Okay, so this is usually how you build up your um, your estimate. Um, I didn't include the special installations and so forth, um, but your primary items is calculated here and then you've got your quantities here and you have your rate that you've calculated from your previous uh, buildings um, and then you times that with uh, your costs to get to your um, total um, estimate for, for the project. So the substructure was estimated to be a value of 189,000 uh, for the specific project. Okay, so you can see the uh, component level goes up to this section. Um, and then uh, when we get into our detailed methods, each subsection is then divided even further into different sections. So uh, your substructures will have all its comp um, um, components um, built into it um, further down. Okay, thanks. That concludes our uh, second section of this uh, lecture. Um, the next little slideshow, we're going to look at our parametric system.